Hi everyone, today I want to introduce you to a free add-on for Blender called WonderMesh. WonderMesh is a collection of parametric primitives for Blender. Unlike the default objects you can create in Blender, you can non-destructively edit these objects at any time after you create them. You can download WonderMesh for free on GitHub. If you click on code, just download the zip file here, or you can get it on Blender Market for as low as $6. The description says that the add-on is for version 2.8 of Blender. However, it does work in the current version of Blender. I'm currently using 2.93.4. The only issue I've had is with the sphere in the K-Cycles version of Blender. If I change the subdivisions of the sphere, for example, it tends to crash the K-Cycles version of Blender 2.93.4. Personally, I think this is a very useful plugin and I hope it will be updated to work with all new versions of Blender. And I'm also hoping that further primitive shapes will be added to the add-on. Once you've installed the plugin, you can find it under the Add menu or you can create the primitives using Shift A and you can see the W primitives right here at the top. I have already prepared an example scene with all the primitives that are currently available in WonderMesh. So let's have a quick look at each of them and let's find out what we can do with these. I'll start with the plane object here. And in order to access the parameters of each of these objects, you need to go to the object data properties here. And almost all the way at the bottom, you will find a new entry, which is called WMesh data. If you unfold that, you will have access to all the parameters you can change for the respective object. For the plane, we can change the size in both directions. We can change the number of segments. And down here at the bottom, you have an option that says centered. If you uncheck that, the pivot point of the object will be moved, like you see here in the viewport. And if you check that, it is the default state of the object in this case. You also have an option down here that says animated. And what this does is it helps you save system resources. You can animate all of these parameters here. And if you have a lot of these objects in your scene and you have a lot of animated parameters, this can slow Blender down quite a bit. And in order to prevent that from happening, you can check the animated option off here. And I think it's checked off by default. Finally, at the very bottom of this section, there is an option to convert the object to a regular mesh. And once you do that, you will lose all of the parameters above here. So you can see now this is just a regular mesh and we don't have access to all of the parameters anymore. Next, let's have a look at the cube. And for this one, we can also change the size in all three directions and we can add segments in each of the three directions here. And for the cube, we also have this centered option here, which I think is checked by default. If I uncheck this, the object pivot will be moved to the bottom corner of this cube here. Next, let's have a look at the disk object or the ring as it's called in WonderMesh. With the ring, you can change the radius and you also have the option to create an inner radius here. You can also create sections by changing the angles. You can change the number of segments. And you can also use cap segments if you want to. I'll just reset everything to default here. For the ring, we also have an option to use the inner radius. And if we uncheck that, you can see we only get the edges on the outside of the object here. Next, let's have a look at the sphere. By default, the topology will be created is a cube topology. And for the sphere, you can also change the radius. You can change the subdivisions. And this is the parameter that crashes K-Cycles Blender for me. But in regular Blender, it seems to work just fine. You also have an option to triangulate the sphere this option will not work with the cube topology though. You have a number of options regarding the topology. The default is cube. You can also create a UV sphere. And for this one, we don't have a triangulate option. We also have a tetrahedron. And for this one, we can actually triangulate the faces here. We also have an octahedron and an icosahedron. 
And for the octahedron, which looks exactly the same as the cube topology, you can actually triangulate the geometry if you want to. And the same goes for the icosahedron, you can also triangulate this. Most of the primitives also have a smooth shading option. So this is switched on by default, which is nice because you don't have to do this manually every time you create an object, like you would have to do with the default Blender objects. So I can switch that off if I want to. But like I said, by default, this is switched on. And I find this actually pretty useful. And the other options, you, you can see that some of these settings here or options that you have are exactly the same for all of the objects like animate it and convert to regular mesh. Most of the objects also provide the option to switch off smooth shading. Now let's have a look at the cylinder. Here we can change the main radius. We also have the option to create an inner radius here, which will turn this into a tube. We can change the height. You can also create sections if you want to, change the segments, create cap segments, and create additional height segments here. And for this one, we also have the option to switch off the inner radius, which will remove the caps from the cylinder. And I think that's a really useful option. For the cylinder, the centered option works a little differently. So what you see here is how Blender would create a cylinder in your scene with the origin right at the center of the object. If I switch that off for the cylinder, it's going to move the pivot point to the bottom of the object and the plugin will also move the object to the floor. And this is also a nice option to have because usually it would take a number of steps to do this manually in Blender. Next up is the cone. And for this we have an option to change the top radius. We can change the main radius, the height, the segments, and we can add vertical segments, and we can also add cap segments here. And again, this one has a centered option that lets you put this object on the floor if you want to. Now let's have a look at the capsule. For this one, we can change the radius. If we bring this up high enough, the object will change into a UV sphere. We can change the height, the segments, there's an option to add vertical segments and you can also increase the cap segments if you want to. And again, we have the centered option here, like we do for most of the other W primitive objects. As for the torus, we can change the main radius. We can change the thickness of the ring here. We can also create sections, increase the segments, and turn on and off smooth shading. The last Wonder Mesh primitive is the screw, and here we can change the radius, we can change the inner radius, the height, we can change the number of rounds here, and we can change the number of segments. I think this is a really useful little helper for Blender that offers some options that you don't have with the default Blender objects. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you again soon.